Today, I would like to introduce the practice about the Chaos Mesh end-to-end -end test, aka E2E test, for everyone in Chaos Mesh development. So before, before we introducing how E2E tests, how E2E tests, uh, how E2E tests work in the Chaos Mesh, I'd like to share some backgrounds and about the very beginning time for the Chaos Mesh uh, development. When I first contribute to the Chaos Mesh, it only have some uh, check, uh, linked checking and a few tests and a few tests to ensure the functionality. Each time we, we merge a request, we, our developers have to manually, have to manually test, uh, to, to test and cover the basic test case to ensure the, you know, to ensure the chaos mesh functionality. And we are also very worried about the undiscovered, the, the undiscovered bugs. So to, to, to solve the problem I mentioned before, we began to add many unit tests unit tests for the chaos mesh. And in my view, there are mainly two types for the unit test for the application in the Kubernetes. One type is a round, is a round, is a round the, the templates about the rendering or verifying. Uh, you can see in the first case, uh, we, 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 we create a, we, we create a, a chaos, we create a chaos. Or, or, or a container here, and uh, we we call a function to to set some environment to set some environment variable, and we and we expect the variable uh, is rendered in the template. Uh, another another case is is some um, another is to use the in memory implementation of the API server and the, the client in some com common actions like we create some objects, then we get, uh, we try to get this object and uh, verify whether it is success. So unit test is great for the simple things, but a lot of caveats as it's very simple, as it's very simple. It doesn't get the full functionality like the machine control chain on the API, API server side and haven't the additional the, and the having the additional controllers running, uh, like you deploy a deployment object in the Kubernetes, and then you can finally get some port objects in the Kubernetes. Though you are missing a lot, it still be great for it still be great for the unit test to have a quick simple testing. So unit test would be helpful for the um, stateful machine style actions like uh, given the inputs uh, and expect the output state as it, but it doesn't test the, it doesn't real test the whole system as a whole. So, so to test the application on the, on a whole, how a whole system, uh, uh, the, the, the E2E test is necessary. So what E2E test we mean here is bringing, is, is bringing up a Kubernetes cluster, deploying your application and uh, coding what you expect and uh, what users to be doing. So to run a E2E test, you need a full Kubernetes cluster and the test code and the testing code should be and should be like black box style black box style here is one example in chaos mesh e3 test case for the pod queue action um, as we can see here as we can see here first uh, in this case first we create a target engine pod here in the kubernetes then then we deployed a pod chaos object with a uh, with a pod, with a killing action with a killing action, and uh, and the chaos mesh actually had been installed before. After that, we, after that we expected a, 
we expect the target port disappeared. We expect the target port disappeared in a certain minutes. If not happen, if not, we will think this ETRE test is a failure test. So that's the core principle for the ETRE test with the application on the Kubernetes. First, we assume the application have installed on the, we, we assume the, your application have been installed on the Kubernetes, then the test application should be connected to the Kubernetes cluster. And finally, we simulate the operation from users and expect the results of what they will expect, where they will expect by codes. <clears throat> so, to run a ETRE test, we have to deploy Chaos Mesh on uh, Kubernetes and make the test application connect to the cluster. But where the cluster comes from, first we can try to deploy the Chaos Mesh from an existing cluster. Then we have to be very careful each time to clean up the environment before the test begins as we need to ensure that there are no more things remaining from the last test which can affect the test this time. To ensure the, to ensure the cluster, to ensure the cluster is clean, uh, the second way is to bring up a new cluster each time we have a end-to-end -to -end test. Um, but this is really, but you know, bring up a new Kubernetes cluster can be very, can be very slow. So the third way is to buy the cloud service, is to buy the cloud service. Um, it would be rather fast and stable, easy to use and really clean. And really clean, you can also test your application um, on multiple Kubernetes cluster with different versions. Uh, Everything looks pretty, but pretty good, excepting the cost will be really expensive. So how to bring, bring up a Kubernetes slightly and not so expensively. Now I'd like to introduce a tool called Kind. Um, as, Kind's intro, as Kind's introduction, it is it is a tool for running local Kubernetes and uh, using Docker containers, using Docker containers. It was primarily, it was primarily designed for testing Kubernetes itself. But now time, now there's many, many applications or run or controller runtime library use it for the local development or the continuous integration. So with the help from the kind, we can simply create a Kubernetes cluster lightly with a wanted version. Then we maintain the, the rest logic in the, in the, we maintain the rest logic in the test application and manage the API. And, and in this application, we need to, we can, we can deploy Chaos Mesh and manage the API objects in the Kubernetes. We also, we also need to, we also need to install the Helm client and the Kube control so that the application can directly execute it. To make the test application running environment constancy for every user, we wrap the test application and its dependency into a doc image and running it as a container. So the whole structure is very clear. We use kind to create a new Kubernetes cluster and running the test application in a container. The test application would connect to the Kubernetes as a client and finish the remaining test case. To manage the E2E test case properly, many developers have uh, many developers choose uh, Jinko for managing task case and uh, Go Omega and Go Omega for assertions. Those two libraries are very famous for Go Long, Go language developers. Also, Kubernetes did provide the framework 
for the E2E test case, which is based on the Jinko and the Go Omega. In my opinion, there are at least three advantages to use the Kubernetes E2E framework in the, in the E2E test. First, the, the framework provide a unique namespace for each test case. Before each test case started, E2E framework would create a new namespace for it. And the, and the developer, and the developer um, should deploy, should, um, should create the, do everything or do any action in this, like, for example, create the port or inject and inject a chaos in this namespace. This action ensures that each test case is independent and wouldn't affect each other. When the test case finished, the framework would del delete the namespace automatically. The second advantage is that all the test cases are running parallel. You know, almost all the actions in Kubernetes is asynchronous. The Kubernetes have a wonderful Go package called wait, which is easy to use and valuable to learn. In each case, we would asynchronous wait for a certain time to verify whether the, the targets have become the desired state. If, if, it, if they didn't, the test, case, the, the test case will meet and time out error and the framework will think this case as a failure as failure and uh, the third advantage is the is that it, the e2e framework provide the suitable logs util um, logs util um, and and the in e2e framework we recommended users to use the framework's log f function to print the log after the test ended, the log would be finally saved into an XML file with the JUnit format, which will be friendly to read in the jacking server, jacking service. Now we have the tools and the suits to help us running the E2 task case. We can start the case, we can start the case in a local environment. So how to build a system that supports support the E2E test each time for the Chaos Mesh GitHub request? As we mentioned before, to set an environment running, running the E2E case, we need kind to bring up a new Kubernetes cluster, a container to wrap the, to wrap the E2E test application. So in Chaos Mesh and E2E practice, we wrap these tools and applications in one pod and make this pod running on an existing Kubernetes cluster. So in this pod, we will use kind to, to create a cluster and run a container to execute the end-to-end -end E3 test application. As we, will as we will run so many things, of course it will cost um, it will cost too mu uh, so much CPU and CPU resources, memory, and the inferior storage. Uh, so we also use the tenting mechanism to limit only one E2E test port running on a single node. So in our CI processing, for each pull request, we would we would build a temporary doc image version for this branch in Chaos Mesh repository by Jenkins server. Then the Jenkins would deploy the E2E test pod on our internal internal Kubernetes cluster and pass the image params to let the test application um, know which version of Chaos Mesh. So when all the tests passed, the request would receive this event and allow and allowed it and allowed to be merged. <clears throat> In Chaos Mesh repository, you can trigger the E2E test case with an one single command. Just com just comment the command with slash run E2E test 
then I need to test the job will start automatically. When the test check is passed, you can find it on the Chaos Mesh um, E3 test checking status. <clears throat> if you want to know the process, the progressing for your E3 test processing, you can click the details button and it will be jumped to the E3 test detail page. Then we expand the script section, the script section, and see the detail logs during E2E test. In this case, you can see the E2E test is failed this time. So I need to find out which which case caused the test failed. So in the logs, we can find that the port the port failure with the duration type. Um, failed in this case, then we can we can check the then we can check we should check the code for this case and find out what what caused the what caused it failed. <clears throat> also, you can run the E2E test uh, locally. The chaos mesh the chaos mesh have wrapped those E2E steps uh, as as a script so that you can only execute the command instead of installing so much dependencies, uh, so much in dependencies. The first command is to, is to run the whole E3 test in, in, the local, in the local environment. But however, during our development, we don't need to run the whole test case. So we prepare the second case that you can pass the Jinko params and run a specific test case. Uh, if you want to run the E3 test case for many times, it would be it would be time consuming that creating and deleting the cluster for each time. So we can use reuse and the skip down flag to re to re to reuse the cluster and we test before. This would be really convenient for the local development. Though the current E3 process ensured the functionality for the Chaos Mesh, there still existed much, so much work to do to improve the developers and the contributors' experience. The, the first thing we need to do is to improve the stability of the E2E test. Sometimes the E2E test job might be failed due to the network problem or some race problem during the test. Um, it might be useful to add some cache or the mirror source to make the E2E test job running well. The second thing is to make the online E2E test job become easy to debug. When the test failed, we have few methods to know which cause, uh, to know what happened and uh, the root reason which caused the test failed. The third thing is to support the cloud vendor API as Chaos Mesh will support the, the, cloud, the cloud chaos in future and uh, we might run a, a cycle job on the cloud to verify the chaos mesh ability in cloud. <clears throat> so that's all for my sharing about the chaos E3 task practice. So thank you all.